Hello. Hello, hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, are you able to see the screen? Uh, give me just a second. Sure. Uh, Yes, I can see it. Okay, good. So I'll uh, go over some of the basics, and uh, then I'm sure you have some questions. So we can go over those uh, questions also. So <clears throat> basically, uh, to start out, let's say you receive a new client. Uh, this is where you will add their information, um, basic demographic information. And uh, after a client is created, let's say I created uh, this client, and uh, after that, uh, a client can have one or more cases associated with them. So I'll add uh, one case, test case one, and save it. I can add one more, test case two. So the case could be, uh, a project that you are doing, uh, independent project you are doing for that particular client. Uh, let's say if you are an attorney uh, and uh, let's say Cisco Systems is your client, they may have uh, various litigations going on, you will add uh, those cases here. And uh, once the cases uh, are added, um, so I'll go over uh, some of the thing in cases. I just clicked on cases and it takes me to the cases screen. Um, a case could also be a fixed fee case. If it's, uh, I clicked on edit case and uh, if you see it's a zero. Zero means no limit. It's a hourly rate. Uh, you can bill any amount. But let's say sometime it happens that client says I'm going to give you only $5,000 for this case. Um, and then I'll agree 5,000. The system will keep track of uh, uh, this amount. Um, is this okay? So now I will go ahead and enter uh, some time entries, which can be done in various ways. So let's say I have one option to click on Add Notes. It's a detailed entry, and all I have to do is uh, uh, enter R, uh, meeting with client to go over the case, and I'll just say save. And as you can see, the entry is now saved. And because I entered 5,000 maximum for this case, uh, the system will uh, tell me how much budget is remaining uh, to be built. Uh, there is another one other thing uh, after us. Can, 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 can you go back to the add time entry screen where you added it? Sure. Is there a section on here that you can enter that does not appear on the bill? Yes. If you uncheck this box, and let me just uh, enter one more entry. Um, this entry is not going to be. Build. No, 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 like, like I want, I want it to be billed, but I may need to put a note on my time record that is not going to appear on a bill. The time is billed, but a note would not be billed. Like, the note would just not show up on the printed bill. Well, that is not possible. If, it, uh, if you see an invoice, there has to be something listed there. So I'll show you a sample invoice. <clears throat> oh, you like you will not be able to. Instance, see. We sometimes just put a one-word entry on the invoice, like analysis. But then we we have a separate field where we can input additional descriptor descriptions of what we were doing that we don't want to go out to the client. So oh, I see. Okay, only. so this is uh, one hour uh, NL analysis of the case and then what I will do is say attach private note I okay. did uh, a lot for <laughs> this matter but uh, don't want 
going to see it. And if I okay, save perfect. it, so now you will see this is listed here, whatever private note you wrote. This will not be printed on invoice. Invoice will only see this, and this is only for your eyes only. Fantastic. All right. So one thing I was uh, going to show is that uh, every case uh, client has different, uh, you know, they, <clears throat> they will pay you differently. Some will pay $300 an hour, some will pay $100 an hour, and this is a place where you enter. So after you create a case, then uh, you click on a staff access rate and say, okay, for John, uh, client will pay $300 an hour. Uh, for Daniel, uh, client will pay 150 an hour. So this way system knows um, uh, how much is the available rate for each of uh, the people in your firm for this particular case. Specific, the rates are? Can you say that again? The rates are case specific? Rate can be case specific. So if I enter it under cases, staff access rate, then this rate will only apply to test case one. I can have okay. a different rate for the same client. I can have different rate for uh, different cases. So for this case, I can say for this case, then Daniel will be billing three, 450 an hour. So you can also do that. So rates are case specific. If you don't enter anything, then the system will take rates, whatever is listed here under the staff. Okay. So, so um, it's very flexible. You can also go, let's say if a client has 50 cases and uh, you would say, you know, I don't want to go 50 times and enter those rates. Uh, what I will do, I'll go to the client. Um, so I'm under clients, I selected the client and I'll uh, say hourly rates here. So I'll enter hourly rates here and um, then I don't have to enter for a specific case. But this will only work if, say, client has many cases and he's uh, paying the same amount for each case. Uh, so there are different level of granularities here. Okay. And now that he, we enter some time entries here, uh, let's create an invoice. So to create an invoice, we have two ways to do it. One is to cl click on the invoices tab and then click on uh, the create invoice and then click on this and let's say select all, generate invoice. As you can see, an invoice has been generated. You can download it in various formats and if we go back to the time entries, you will see that two time entries, this I entered a non-billable meaning this system will not consider it for invoicing. But the checkbox that you see here indicates that these two entries has already been included in one invoice, some invoice. Uh, you can always edit it back. Let's say initially we said this was not billable, but now I want to bill it, bill, want to make it billable. I'll just check this box and save it. Uh, you will now see it's billable. I can now create an invoice uh, to include this entry select and now we have two invoice. Invoice can, can be freely deleted so I can delete these and I'll show you another way of doing it. So I click deleted both invoices and as you see the checkbox is gone meaning these entries are now uh, can be built again. So I'm clicking on settings tools report and then bulk generate invoices. So now what happens if you are a high volume firm, um, you will be creating 50, 60, 70 invoices every month. Uh, we actually have clients that they create like 400, 500 invoices every month. Uh, it uh, will be a pain to go to each case and uh, do what we just did to create the invoice. This is a shortcut. So now if I just click on this button generate invoice, the system will go iterate through each case in the system, try to find if there is some unbuilt, previously unbuilt time 
and it will generate all those invoices without, uh, you know, internally seamlessly. But let's say we just want to create invoice for the cases we just added. So we added two cases, test case one, test case two, and uh, uh, I want to create invoice for both of them, and I just don't want to input any other thing. So if I just click generate, the system has created the invoice. If we go back, you see the checkbox is back, and the system created an invoice automatically. And this feature, you can also select, um, let's say, you can say, generate invoice for the time entered from April 1st to April 31st. And you can also change the invoice date to, let's say, May 2nd. This is useful when uh, you are going to bill on monthly basis um, in, the, in the following month. You don't want to include the entries, uh, for example, May entries if you're generating invoice in May because client want to see the invoice for the last month. In that case, you can select whatever date uh, you want to select uh, and uh, system will only generate um, uh, invoices uh, for the work performed between these two dates. So this is a shortcut to generate lots of invoices uh, um, very quickly within second. And uh, now if you have lots of invoices to download, uh, you don't have to go, one way is to go to case by case basis and click on invoices and click on a PDF icon and it will download an invoice uh, in PDF format. Or what you can do is you can go to the dashboard and say invoices download all invoices for select uh, month and year and here I will select May and if I click on download it will download the zip file that will have all the invoices generated in the month of May so this is all also a shortcut and then you can print them out or email them you can also email the invoices from the system right here so if I go to invoices tab, I can click on this button and it will pre-populate everything. And this text, you can set your own template in the system. So instead of uh, using the system default, system provide a default text, but you can modify it and system will use it. And if you click on email, uh, the invoice will be sent along with this email to the client and system will also mark it uh, what time, what date it was sent to. So you can monitor it uh, whether you have sent the invoice to the client or not. And let's say when you receive a payment, uh, you click on this green dollar sign and say, uh, it doesn't have to be a full payment. Let's say I only receive $50 uh, from the client. Check number one, two, three, and I say record payment. And you, as you see, uh, if I click on the payment tab, the payment has been recorded. The system will also give a running summary of uh, how much was uh, total invoice, how much is, has been received, how much is total unpaid. There are many uh, reporting options here. Uh, one, I will show, it will show a client-wise summary. If I click on the summary, it will show me how many cases the client has, how many, uh, how much has been billed, how much has been received, uh, what is the total account receivable for this particular client, um, and uh, the payments will also be listed repeated here under the client tab. Um, if you go to this dashboard, uh, here also there are <coughs> many reporting options. Say you want to see a list of uh, all the people who has not paid you, you just click on account receivable, it will give you a list of how much is uh, overdue on each of the client. This will create automated letters to the clients uh, where you just print it and send it. So the letter, each letter will have how much uh, uh, is uh, uh, account receivable or how much they haven't paid you yet. And uh, <clears throat> unpaid invoices are also listed on the dashboard. So 
all those operations, for example, recording a payment can also be done from the dashboard without going to each case. Um, and uh, uh, all these things, uh, all other places here is provide some summary of what is happening, how much you have built. This is an interesting screen here. This tells you that you have entered the time, but you have not generated a bill uh, for uh, these amounts. So if you see the amount is growing, uh, that means it's time to bill the client. So it's a very quick feedback. Uh, if just in case if someone forgot to send a bill to the client, the system will keep a record of how much has been entered in the system but has not been billed to the client. And let's see, <clears throat> uh, I don't know if you use trust accounting, we can also handle trust accounting here. Uh, task management, you can create tasks for people and uh, they will get a notification when task uh, is created and uh, they can mark it complete and uh, whoever assigned the task will also get a notification. System will keep track of uh, all the tasks for all the firm members uh, and whether they are due or uh, late, running late. Um, you can also do vendor management uh, which is not everybody uses but uh, uh, Suppose you have uh, these vendors who you pay, uh, for example, landlord, uh, court reporters, a third party investigator, you can also uh, manage them here. They will be sending you invoices. You can manage their invoices independent from your own invoices. A phone log is uh, uh, kind of, you know, all the old time when someone receives a message, uh, you pull a, a post-it and note it down on that and give it to uh, the person uh, for whom the message was intended to. Uh, that can also be recorded here instead of uh, jotting it down on a, a piece of paper for later reference. And uh, as soon as uh, uh, entry is made here, the person uh, for whom the message was left uh, will be notified via email that uh, so, so and so called and this is a message for you. And this can also be used for inter-firm communication between the people uh, in the firm. And let's see, under staff, um, uh, let's see if I want to find out all the time entries for this particular person, I'll just click on here. Uh, this will give me all the entries uh, uh, created by this client, this, this particular uh, person. Um, this one should have more. So these are all the time entries, all the cases Roger has worked. Uh, so this also gives a very quick glance to what each individual person has been doing. Uh, we also have a, a concept of a role management. So as you see, this person is of type office secretary. Uh, this person is type contract, do not show staff. Uh, so do not show amount. So when this person logs in, this person will not see any of the amounts. The screen will look different. Uh, there will be no staff, account, task, ledger. All these steps will not be visible. No amounts will be displayed. And when this person makes a time entry, uh, this field will be hidden. So the, that, and, and this person will only be able to see his own time entries not anybody else's time entry uh, without seeing the, the, the amount. Another type of role... Are, hang on, are those, um, are those role levels customizable or are they, are they can? So there are... Uh, administrator can see everything, it's not customizable. Contract okay. staff cannot be uh, customized. Only thing that can be customized is office secretary. So you can have office secretary and you can pick and choose what you want to see and do, uh, this person can do. So this is customizable, the office secretary role is customizable. Okay. And it's under customize office secretary role. And let's see, <clears throat> you can also have your uh, case uh, uh, categories uh, where you can assign uh, various categories to the cases. So let's say I want to say it's a personal injury case. So system can then provide reports 
based on categories. Um, uh, can I add customizable? Yes, you can add your own categories. Uh, you can uh, actually system doesn't provide any. You have to add your own category. Uh, okay, this perfect. is my category and it will be listed if I go back. Uh, it is listed here. You can change them. So you will have to create your own categories, yes. Can I do the same thing on the client side as well? I want to name different types of clients. So the client, actually we go by case uh, because client is normally either a person or a company, but they have different type of cases. So we categorize by, uh, uh, we categorize the cases, not the clients. Right, because I think of clients as contacts. We would, we would have contacts in there that wouldn't necessarily have cases. Um, well, we have combined both, both things to keep it simple. Uh, so you can have contacts without cases here. Um, uh -huh. Or you can also have, we have another place. So let's say you create a, a case. And under that case, you can list all the people associated with this case. So, uh, and can I categorize them like as the CEO or the attorney or an accountant? Yes. So you can you can say let's say uh, there is a place here. Uh, title, title. So you can put it in title. Let's see. Um, opposing. Console and I just save it. So yes, uh, the system you can enter that in title who this person is. Uh, so it will categorize it like this. You can download the list okay. and you can sort it by that title in Excel if you want to. And uh, there are various. I can't. Can I see all of the people in here? independent of cases. So I, if I just want to find George Smith, am I going to have to search every case for George Smith or is there like a name listing somewhere uh, where I can look for George Yes, Smith? Uh, you, can, uh, you can find. Uh, so I'm on the dashboard. I'll go conflict check, say check, and I'll say Smith. Show me where, the, where Smith appears. And it will, the system will tell you that I found this name under these cases and under these companies also. So, uh, what if I just want to find him to find his phone number to call him? Well, so you can do that. So, so you got where you can uh, find him. So first, uh, because Smith could be different Smith. So let's say you were looking for uh, John Smith. So I'll click on this. And it will take me to that case. I'll say, go to names, and here it is. You can get his phone number here if it was entered and call him. So it's a two-step okay. process. So first you have to filter it down because the name, they could be, as I said, the same name may appear in different cases. So you have to first find the right person and then click uh, right here in the dashboard. And... Uh, you get to the right case. So let's say uh, John, John, and the system found several Johns, and I say, oh, I'm interested in John Moore. I'll click on here, click on names, and he's right here. So I'll find the phone number and call him. Do the Contacts and calendar sync with Outlook 365? Uh, yes. Uh, not the contacts, but the calendar, yes. Uh, I think, uh, let me, I'll double check whether contacts are also synced with the, uh, we do have some. Uh, it depends on what API is provided by Office 365. And I think last time when it was implemented, uh, it was calendaring. So let's say if you create a calendar item here, um, it will be uh, it will be synced with. Uh, there is something wrong with the screen, but uh, uh, when you create it here, you can sync it. Uh, it will automatically be synced to your Office 365 calendar, and not only one person. Let's say if you enter multiple people or if you have uh, uh, 
primary and secondary uh, person assigned, their calendar will also have those entries. And I think some uh, this screen is uh, sh being shown a little deformed, but I think the the browser has some issues. But uh, we'll we'll get that fixed. So this. Uh, um. Can I, like, can I pull up, say, my calendar for today and see everything I have going on or pull up one of my colleagues and see what they have going on on their calendar for the day? Uh, so, yes, the so upcoming calendar uh, is shown on the dashboard. So you will see uh, whatever is going to happen in the next one week. All the entries will be shown here. So on can top... Can you switch it to calendar view for me? So this will also show in calendar view, um, and you, you, mine or? you can filter it. Uh, so we have uh, uh, a toggle. Uh, so if you click on this button, um, you can either. So if you are an admin, by default you will see calendar of all people. But you can click on this toggle, then you will start seeing only your calendars. What if you're not admin? Uh, then you will see only your calendar. Then you will not have this button. If you are not an admin, you will see only your calendar, not anybody's calendar. Does the calendar support multiple time zones? We have offices in more than one time zone. It will actually go by one time zone, which is your primary time zone in uh, Office 365. And uh, from there, you can share that with uh, other people and then Office 65 will take care of that uh, time zone translation if you are sending the invite to uh, people in different time zone. So uh, if you uh, share that um, with other people, if uh, then, uh, but CaseFox, as far as CaseFox uh, is coded, uh, it will only go get to the time zone of the primary calendar in Office 365. Um, can you put items on your, well, I guess you can put items in your calendar that are private, but the admin would still see them, right? Uh, admin can see them no matter what. Admin and office secretary role, uh, if, if so um, uh, customized, can create calendar entries for anybody, for okay. your, yourself or any firm member, yes. Where are your servers domestic or abroad? Our servers are in Florida and Texas. And we are based in California. Okay. Um, on for staff time entries, do you is there a reporting function like a monthly report for staff time? There, there are many, many, many type of reporting. Uh, so this, these buttons uh, will give you a monthly breakup of who built how much each month uh, for this client. Uh, we actually can break it down by day also. There are various other reports uh, that you can pull. Uh, quick reports. Uh, Total by month, total by month, only mine, including all users, per day totals for this year. So this will give you each and every day how much work was done by each staff member, year to date, last three months. And then uh, above all, you can always pull data by going to settings, tools, reports, and a run report. So here you can select uh, I want to find out all the work that has been done between these two dates, either for all client or you can select a particular client that, okay, show me uh, everything that has been done for this client, all their cases between these two dates. You can also filter it down to show me how much Christy has done for this client between th these two dates. You can also select or unselect some of the check boxes where you say, just show me uh, the, the entry that has all that, that has been built or so me the entry that has not been built so there are various filter options that will give you a very comprehensive report in Excel and from there you can also manipulate it in Excel but uh, there are so many ways to uh, pull reports uh, from the system okay. and uh, 
there are many other options when you have time you can uh, um, we have this uh, uh, automatic billing which sometimes is useful let's say if you have a client uh, that you bill a fixed amount every month uh, for example accountant they charge their small business client three four hundred just for doing their bookkeeping you can automate that process you can say generate uh, a bill for $300 every month on this date, the system will automatically generate the bill, send it to the client, uh, so you don't have to manually make those entries uh, monthly. Compensation report, this is also useful in law firm settings at least. What happens is, let's say uh, a partner brings a new client and associates are going to work on it, uh, he receives a certain portion of everybody's billing, that can also be configured here and the system will give a report how much each staff member should be paid and how much uh, uh, fraction should go to the person who's, who actually brought the client to the firm. And uh, client portal, we also provide uh, customized portals uh, uh, for uh, um, every um, client. So let's say I will go to this and you see the client, uh, we just uh, invoice $900. So each client can go to their own portal. We entered a $50 payment which is reflected here. They can download their account statement. They can see their invoices. They can download their invoices. They can see their payments. We made a $50 payment. They can pay the invoices right here online using credit card. And the system will automatically record that payment so there is no double entry. Um, you can also charge a credit card surcharge when you set up the, uh, the client portal. You can say you will charge 2% extra for paying by credit card. And uh, you can also send them messages. Uh, they can send you messages and files through their own dedicated portal. And of course, all these names will be your firm's name and your logo, uh, not Case Fox. So, uh, so this is a good way of uh, uh, client. Uh, normally, individual corporate client probably will not use it, but individual client uh, love love this thing. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, uh, when uh, you want to integrate your Office 365, you will go to that option there and uh, click on. So right now, mine is already linked to mine, but uh, th there will be a button saying link your uh, link Office 365. You just need to click that button and uh, uh, follow the screens and that's it. After that, the system will sync the calendar entries uh, transparently, uh, seamlessly behind the screen. And we also have a feature here. Say, let's say you created an, uh, uh, an event in Case Fox and that is synced to uh, uh, your Office 365. You are free to amend that event in Office 365 and the, our system will automatic, automatically will get the updates and update itself in Case Fox. So you, you can either change it here in Case Fox or you can change it in Office 365. Going to your Outlook client or web interface or, or whichever you are going to use. And we uh, Office 365 and our server are always in communication to get the update, latest update from each other. Okay. And uh, so these are the basic thing. Uh, there are some other reporting options here. Uh, you know, uh, month by month report, um, you know, invoice list, payment list. Um, Sometimes, you know, you make a, a mistake saying, oh, wait a minute, I created I, the, the case under a wrong client. Uh, that's not a problem. You can move uh, the cases easily from one client to another client with, without uh, re-entering everything or deleting anything. You can e even, uh, sometimes people make mistake, they enter their time entries on the wrong case. They can also move them under the right case. So all those things that normally people either make innocent mistakes 
or normally use those feature has been taken care of. You can also have case documents here and uh, uh, we don't have uh, SkyDrive uh, integration yet because their API was still uh, being developed. But you can use Dropbox, Google Drive or Box, your own accounts, uh, which can be created free of cost, uh, basic accounts. And you can have your documents right there. So case document, you have to, you can have everything at one place. Let me see if I have some case documents. As you see, uh, under this case, I, you know, I have, I'm using Google Drive to store some of my case documents. So this is a good way of keeping everything related to the case all at one place, including documents. And uh, other info, this is uh, something about the case that you want to capture. Uh, let's say, I don't know, in a family law case, you want to capture client social security number and various other information um, that you can create custom fields and enter it here. And uh, the good thing is, um, uh, cases are searchable by these, this information. So let's say if you want to find out where uh, you enter 444, um, maybe the full one, maybe uh, it's not enabled, but you can search uh, by these, uh, uh, the values that you enter here. <coughs> Let's try one more time. So if I enter, maybe I have disabled it for my account, but you can uh, search by these names. Oh, because it's encrypted. Let, let's try another uh, test. Custom field. And this is case fox demo. And if I save it, and now if I want to find out where do I, I entered this value, so I'll enter case fox demo, and hopefully it will find. No, it did not because I did not demo. Yeah, I need to check this. This should be able to find this uh, particular uh, case by the, uh, the, the values you, you have entered over here. Uh, you can also have case related tasks. Um, that will also show up under the task, but you can associate them. When you are creating a task, you can associate them up with a particular case. So this way you can also keep track of what are the tasks related to this particular case. You can also have personal notes. Uh, these are only for your information. Um, client called asking about the expert witness. Um, I provided some info. So this way you can keep track of what is happening in this case. Um, so if some a new person joins, uh, he or she can come up to speed pretty quickly just by reviewing what has happened in the past. Let's see what else. Uh, so these are the basics, uh, which is very repetitive process, very straightforward. Once you do it in w one time, uh, it's the same process every month. Well, I appreciate your time and for walking us through it. We um, are in the process of researching um, options for the firm, and we will um, present them to our shareholders. And um, if this is something they're on board with, we will contact you guys back. Certainly. We are always available. If you have more questions, you can send us an email. We are open seven days a week on email. And uh, most, most of the time, we respond within five minutes uh, uh, during weekdays. And on the weekend also, maybe within 10 minutes. So we will be happy to answer any other questions you have. All right, I appreciate your time. Thank you. You have a nice day and nice uh, rest of the weekend. Yes, sir. Bye. Bye.